What's up, you stinky geese? Welcome to the Dicky Dines show. This is the second week in a row we've we've done this. We're we're That's being crazy. consistent. <laughs> if, if for anything more than one is consistent. <laughs> yeah. All right. See you guys in three months. We're consistent. We're being. No. Um, all right. So today I have a little fun thing for you, Austin. We went to I'm our sure. Facebook page, and uh, I asked everybody, "Give me a hot take in uh, regards to the metal genre." Nice. This will be good. So these are always really fun, and I really tried to find ones that were actually like kind of hot takes because there were a lot of takes right but a lot of them are just like well yeah i like I mean, breakdowns and i'm don't sick of acting like i don't it's like <laughs> you know, all metalcore sounds the same it's like well yeah. yeah that's a new um, one <laughs> that's that's a take so i got some hot takes uh before we get started on that just want to let you guys know we have a patreon that you can go and support us and follow us click the link in the description below we're going to be doing bonus content wow. on the patreon which includes bonus episodes and bonus podcasts and live Ooh, streams content. so uh click the link in the patreon below it'll definitely help us out a lot and uh yeah it's uh we're gonna have merch soon too which is crazy we're gonna have a merch soon we actually might have it by next week Dickie so dines merch baby. we will let you know about that very shortly but uh yeah in the meantime link for the patreon in the description below but let's get right into this so Balenciaga. hot takes of the metal genre <laughs> okay first one is i don't believe in selling out that's from Joseph Blumenberg. That's a, I th- that kind of is a hot take, but it's a respectable one. A little like, bit. I, I kind of, yeah, I get, I get what the sentiment of that is. Yeah. It's like, yeah, well, I feel like once you hit a certain point, like, because when you're young, you're, it's like all about like, the, like the hope in my eyes and the spark. But then you, you like, you, you know, you go into the industry and you're like, some evil <laughs> ass a little bit in this hard. thing. Yeah, it's kind of like at a certain point, if you're not lucky enough to blow up exponentially, you kind of right. you gotta play the game to a certain extent. I am curious what he means by "I don't believe in it." Like, you don't think bands can change their sound to make more money, or yeah, like, where is it coming from with this more, exactly? Probably less general. And I, I imagine, like, when I there's hear, a lot of people that would disagree with that, right? Yeah, and I, I would disagree with it for the sake of like. Yeah, if you specifically are doing it to sell out, yes. then yeah, that's different yeah. from like. I think what I assume he's talking about is that like when a band gets changes to a certain their level sound, and they're kind of like, okay, let's be realistic here. You know, nobody's right. buying or listening to like what we're doing, so we kind of got to change it up. Yeah. Or like, oh, hey, we toured with uh, Papa Roach, and their sound is very big. Let's try to incorporate some more pop rock sure, element like sure. that. I feel like can yeah. be looked as selling out, but that's that's what I imagine of like I would. That's to me not selling out, but yeah, yeah if you're just like. Uh, it's just me, the singer, and I bought five musicians, and my dad paid for it. <laughs> He's saying we're making uh, Bring Me the Horizon music. Making hard rock now. <laughs> yeah, no yeah. soul to it. No, I agree. That's fair. Yeah, I would like elaboration <laughs> on that, but as itself, that is a pretty hot take. Yeah. Okay, uh, Drew Reich says, Lars, the drummer of Metallica, mm-hmm. may not be the master of tempo, but he is one of the best live drummers out there. <laughs> One of the best. I mean, you're allowed, you're allowed to think that. <laughs> That's quite I mean, a I, hot yeah. take. I used to think Barney was the most entertaining like host of any show because <laughs> I had only known about three hosts. So you know, I think it depends on how wide your repertoire is. Like, <laughs> if you've only seen Metallica, hey live Barney three slaps, times. bro. There will be no Barney hatred here. <laughs> Barney slander. I thought that one was pretty funny. Okay, Barney um, blasphemy. Uh, Joseph Wyatt says we need more actual bands and less one man outfits with everything programmed i take this one personally because that's yeah. literally me <laughs> um i get what he's saying though but a, a counterpoint to that for me would be uh we're having worked with a lot of bands in the past mm-hmm. there's a lot of bands that the writer is just one person in right, that band yeah. like they'll write almost everything and mm-hmm. then the band will come in and you know oh change maybe this little part or maybe we should try this but a lot of bands like a lot yeah, <laughs> yeah. actually only have one maybe mm-hmm. two like the guitarist and the singer right they like will Dude, write you, everything and yeah. then you know there it's it's not really much of a sit in a room like metallica does right and they'll spend two months in a room and they'll come up with right together, an album like, like it just doesn't really happen anymore mm-hmm. but he's saying that it should essentially yeah, yeah i think that's a it's kind of like an evolution of like probably technology too mm-hmm. it's just it, we are in a state where a one person can <laughs> like program right. and write everything and just be like 
well, I could make, I could actually make a living wage yeah. if I just hire people to come out with me. So it's, I, I feel like it's a, it's a hard one to be mad at because right. it, it is just musicians trying to like find a way to make it. <laughs> but yeah, literally it, my it, entire career. Yeah, exactly. So it. yeah, the funny thing is, is too, like when I started doing YouTube and my own stuff, I did that because the other musicians that I w- was in a band with or was working with weren't doing the work like right. I, I wanted to do it, you mm-hmm. know? And so I found that it it was just much more easy and the, middle guys. the flow was a lot better mm-hmm. and the work, the songs and the music and the videos came out way faster when it was just me doing it. Mm-hmm. So I think there's ups and downs to it for sure. And to, let's be real. I mean, the, <laughs> the we like to give the pop world a lot of shit for having like Benny Blancos that write mm-hmm, everything, but right. Don't think the metal genre is not like oh, that. Oh, it's too. basically <laughs> yeah, the, every, every genre is like that. There is oh yeah. It's hard to rip the veil off you, but most of the time there is just a studio guy writing these oh, records yeah. anyway. <laughs> I know like three producers that write for like the top like fifteen right. metalcore bands right now. And a lot of the times when they track to, it's literally just the vocalist and that guy. Yeah, <laughs> just in the studio together, yeah. making the album happen. Hundred <clears throat> percent. All right, uh, Joey Morton says Spirit Box is overrated as hell. What's your take on that, Austin? I, I I feel bad for Spirit Box because they. I think it's just because of how popular, how quick they got popular that mm-hmm. people are like, I don't understand. <laughs> like what? Because they are a good band, but it's like. Holy Roller came out, and that song was right. really unique for the genre, and that put them on the map. And then, you know, there, there's something too about the allure of like having like the metalcore front woman thing pop off. Like, not that it's a bad thing or anything, but I think there's like people think that they're being slighted when they think there's like a gimmick, which is fucked up to call that a gimmick. Right. Yeah. You can see the discourse online. I think a lot of people are like, what, what, what's the difference? Like, cause they sound like some of the other bands that they like, right. you know, but so I think, I think spear box gets uh, thrown in unfairly with the, cause they've been a band for so fucking long. And they were, I wrestled a bear once before. Spirit I was going to say Courtney's put like, in the work been working their asses off. Yeah, so I think years. them blowing up is like totally deserved. And yeah. I think it was just like, if you didn't know about, that also to any band like Sleep Token when they blew up, ever, there's always going to be the people that are like, well, "How come they blew?" Up? Yeah, <laughs> you know, just kinda... spend ten years working to one day blow yeah. up overnight exactly. is really how how it is. And too, that's the modern age with tick, the era of TikTok. All it takes a ten second clip for your yeah. band's d- entire trajectory to change. So. Right, exactly. And I can't hate Spirit Box because no. Josh is my friend. So I and Eternal Blue was a sick album. So, I mean, oh, do they? Yeah, have some I, don't, I don't songs, think they're man. overrated. I think they're great. Uh, Matthew Burns says. More gatekeepers are needed. <laughs> it's not metal without them. That's my More kid. gatekeepers. <laughs> That's so Which is funny. really funny because in the comments, it was one or the other. Mm-hmm. People, me- metal's way too gatekeepy, and I'm like, well, that's just a take. Mm-hmm. But this one, he's like, we need more. I was funny. like, that's kind of a hot take that's, for sure. That's hilarious take, too. <laughs> it's just like, what do you mean? <laughs> what do you, like, what do you mean? <laughs> just... I think I can see where he's coming from where, say, like, there's so much just accepted music mm-hmm. in the genre that the, the bar it is oversaturates not super high because anybody yeah. can kind of do a thing. And to where it's like, no, like we need to be focusing on this band because they're actually sick. Stop focusing on these other 200 bands. Mm-hmm. But still, yeah. it's like I mean, people yeah, will like what they like. You that's know? a hot take. I just don't think there's no fix to that take, though, is the thing. Like there is no remedy to what you oh, want, no, which no. is it's like being upset yeah. that like your local restaurant is like popping off and they're a chain now. It's just right. What are you supposed to be like? Oh, I'm missing when there's only 10 people here. Yeah. Like, yeah, well, sorry. Yes, they got big now. I don't know what you want. <laughs> More gatekeepers <laughs> in metal. Yeah. Maybe just go back to like real metal <laughs> and then you can have all the <laughs> Gatekeepers, you want <laughs> well, that's a whole argument right there. Yeah, what is exactly. real metal? Is it as soon as Dio you get... and Judas Priest, or is it mm-hmm. uh, you know, uh, asking Cannibal Corpse <laughs> asking <laughs> Alexandria? <laughs> yeah, what is real metal? Um, Elliot Swanger says late 2000s and early 2010s metalcore was and still is some of the best genre. Yeah, I fuck. I, I like that. <laughs> That's just, I mean, probably so just my, all my the nostalgia. old metal core essentially is better than the new metal core. I he mean, goes on to say a lot of it is because of like the vibe in those songs. He doesn't get in the new songs, mm-hmm. and I do wonder if that's because that's like what he grew up listening to, right? The nostalgia, and effect. so that's and just there, kind there, of what you're there is something like. too like really pleasant about that era because nobody like. 
knew how to glitterify, you know, the, all the songs and make them sound like right. completely robotic. Like a lot of, you still had to do like live drum takes and shit on some of the things or until Joey Sturgis came yeah, around, it came and ruined yeah. it for everybody. But like there's <laughs> bands like, uh, like tonight alive. I use an example sometimes cause they, their older songs are like so cool and like raw and just like weird and unique, but uh, they blew up and their songs are very like, you know, mellow now and yeah. pretty like uh, digestible, but mm-hmm. it's, it's like when you get so good at a thing, you're like, you eliminate things that are bad, but right. which can be cool and artistic. Right. You know? And w- I think we got a lot of that when people were just kind of starting out in that genre. Cause they were trying weird shit and like right. things that don't work nowadays, but we're like, Oh, what the fuck? It kind of is like nice to hear that now. Cause it's not super polished and it is right. like, kind of more yeah. raw. So I think there is something to that of like, we've sometimes, you know, we eliminate like all the weird shit on a lot of things. Cause it sounds like, like, well, that's not what's, you know, like being right. that, that's not going right to get on Sirius yeah, XM. Exactly. Yeah. So no, yeah, I agree. Yeah, I think there's a, a balance to what he's saying, but I do, I get a little bit of like, especially with metalcore too, there's only so many like dope metalcore riffs and most of them <laughs> have been written. <laughs> and so it's about like the structure now and the vibe and like yeah. the production and like, is the Five, vocalist seven, eight, the sickest ten. thing ever? Five, vocalists seven, carry eight, metalcore ten. bands nowadays. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's like, if you don't have a great vocalist, you're, it's hard to stand out at all. For sure. Well, and that's, that's something I think that's just an issue in the metalcore genre is that, mm-hmm. A lot of these metal vocalists, whether they sing and scream or just scream or just sing, they all just kind of, well, not all, but a lot of them, the ones that don't really make it that far, they mm-hmm. just sound like it, like each other. Right. Like there's yeah. no differentiating. It's like, oh, mm-hmm. that sounds like a Rise Records singer. Right. You know what I mean by that? Yeah, like, no, right, yeah, like exactly. very just like, yep, that's that. Mm-hmm. And okay. Like there's yeah. definitely some that stand out for sure. But the, the lower level, I think of like the, the metal core that hasn't pushed through the veil yet is mainly hindered by the lack of like iconic vocalists right, yeah, in their exactly. sound. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. The emotion behind <clears throat> it a lot too. A lot of those like old metal core bands that are like still together now. Mm-hmm. Like it feels like a lack of a, uh, like heart in some of the music, you know, you kind of feel right. like they're just like, Oh, we got to get this out. Cause this right. is what bands do at this level. We yeah. need the next project versus like, this is my everything, you know? Yeah. I can kind of understand it. Cause like, you know, uh, even doing YouTube for 10 years, there's times where I'm like, man, like these videos are, I need to change what I'm doing. Cause right. like these videos are getting just old, mm-hmm. you know, exactly. it's like, it's the same thing as do you change a lot, a little bit, don't change at all. Because if a band changes, some people hate it. Some people love it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So right. it's like fun. Finding that happy yeah, balance. Yeah, the, the good of, middle ground. It's got to do the stuff. protest the hero ra- route and do whatever you want and then just open a band Patreon. <laughs> just, <laughs> just directly supported by people that like your weird music. And you don't have to worry <laughs> about playing the Spotify there algorithms. You go. <laughs> uh, Brody Underhill says, I prefer Thy Art's first vocalist. <laughs> Yo, hey, hey, boo boo, me too, dude. <laughs> Fuck yeah, bring back Brandon. <laughs> I, I picked that one specifically for you <laughs> because I, I know that That's you That's a hot like take that. for most other people, but yeah. me, I'm team. Well, yeah, he's saying vocalist. CJ. Is, yeah, not as good. Dude, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. I mean, she, yeah, she, Sorry, did, she did a good vocalist, but dude, I'm just a, I'm a slut for those fucking crazy highs, those yeah. like whiny, like oh, yes, it just makes me feel so amped. Like, yeah, I've heard so many you know <laughs> things that, uh, and CJ doesn't do highs anymore. He completely stopped like the last like three albums, mm. no high screams at all. Damn, and I'm like. What are you? It's like one of my favorite things in deathcore is a good old fucking duck on the mic, and <laughs> homie abandoned it. <laughs> and I, can't, I will not forgive. <laughs> All right, uh, Adam Engel says the uh, most modern metal bands aren't as popular as their monthly listeners on Spotify suggests. Yeah, I just don't know. I don't think you know how relativity works. <laughs> it's just like, so basically saying that like you, a band could have, you know, a million monthly listeners, but in reality, they're not mm-hmm. going to pull crowds. It's, it's yeah, essentially yeah. what he's saying. Yeah. Yeah. Is that a, I think that's just a, accurate. I don't know if that's I like think, a hot take. I think that's just like reality. <laughs> I think it depends, man. It depends on like how much current hype you have for sure. Because like you see that with the sleep token thing. Yeah. I guess more you so like just mean? like that uh, plays don't translate to sold out crowds. No, more of course so what I'm not. Getting at. If, like, of course yeah, not. You know, and too, like if a hundred thousand people like your band and they listen to the album three times each, like, you know, yeah. now you look like you've got fucking a ton of right, listeners, but sure. you have this core. It happens with the TikTok people all the time too, where they're like, I have three 
million TikTok followers and they go to a convention and not a single person goes to their line and you're like, oh, that, yeah, okay, that's real. Yeah, that makes sense different. because it's, oh, yeah, and you don't want to, nobody's like watching the sketch guy on yeah. TikTok and is like, I should go to his convention. If you're good <laughs> enough, I guess, yeah. But yeah, but, yeah there's, there's a yeah, lot obviously that, a, a right. balance to um, that. But. There's also, pe- like, I don't know if labels do this, but I've heard through the grapevine that sometimes they actually will buy numbers to pump up like a new Ooh, a new artist to mm-hmm. like build hype mm-hmm. and so they'll a, a new artist will come out and they'll be like damn you have two million monthly right, like sick, your songs only have like 100k plays what's going on here so maybe a little bit of that that's fair in there as well yeah I guess um, that, I guess that is uh, it's, a, it's a fair thing, but I, I yeah I guess I just assumed that was like how I thought things worked. For you know? sure, yeah. <laughs> uh, Brandon Chesterman says Chesterman. Weezer started metal when they made Hash Pipe. Boom 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 boom. That was the, that was the dawn of metal. <laughs> right there, right there. According to Brandon Chester, <laughs> hey man, man. You, you passed the, the criteria for the test. That Which is, is so funny. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because that song came out in like, what, 2003? Yeah, I was like, I'm pretty sure there was something. Like, <laughs> like, not metal, like an old, old Metal's song. been around since like the 70s. That is hilarious. Yeah, like, like, maybe, no, 2000 and whatever. <laughs> maybe if you said like modern metal core was like influenced by that or something, but like Weezer was also the dawn of metal. definitely not a metal song. It's, it's for sure like a rock song. Right, and you could probably do that. I'm sure metal. that if you did like jazz riffs, like old jazz riffs, and just down tuned them, they'd down. Yeah. Like, you could do that with any like oh, genre. For sure. like, this yeah. could have been metal. Jazz is just <laughs> grindcore without distortion. Exactly. Yeah, it's just clean, yeah. clean grind. Like acid jazz. Nice hot take. Uh, Allison Dettenburn says, New metal doesn't suck, and it never has. It is making a comeback. I'm going to take my hat off for this one. It's, I'll put it over my heart. If I can. <laughs> Who's this person? I'm going to add them on Facebook. <laughs> I've never agreed there's harder. A, there's a lot of people that don't like new metal. New metal has always been cool. <laughs> okay. It didn't, it, it was never not cool. I, I fucking love new metal and I will die on that hill and I will beat your ass while Limp Biscuit plays in the background. <laughs> Damn, bro. You're going to make it on a Finn McKinty <laughs> reaction list with the hot takes like that. Good, good. I I'll, actually don't, I think he might like new metal. I, I actually don't new know. Metal. It's so good. He might be into it. I, I, yeah. I don't. If you were white and poor, you like new metal. Yeah, I, <laughs> I fucked with it. That's the first shit I got into, man. Was like, I don't. Well, great. I guess you can call uh, not so much POD, but like uh, hybrid theory, kind of new mm-hmm. metal-y, and then Papa Roach. It's the perfect thing. It's like being tricked a little too, because when you're like metal guy, it's like when you're young in metal, you yeah. like, oh, like uh, pop sucks and rap is crap, yeah, that yeah, type yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. But then new metal comes in and does like aggressive rapping, yeah. and you're like. This, this I didn't cool. know. Nobody told me rap could be cool. I mean, I mean Slipknot. <laughs> yeah, yeah then, they're like the biggest. Like Corn and Slipknot are probably the biggest pioneers for new metal. Corn, and I, I liked them. I, I still listen to their shit. Well, I don't, I don't know about the new forward. Corn album, but you know, new is Corn what it is. Um, Jonas Garcia. <laughs> this is a good one. Jonas Garcia says uh, Tim Lambesis is innocent. <laughs> I don't know if that's how convictions work. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure he served some time. I don't know. No, he's it was fake. It was all bullshit. <laughs> no, <I'm sorry. laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> what is, I was like, okay. How long would you post it? Proven guilty in a court of law. Is served it, time. Fake no, it's no. Fake news, bro. <laughs> He didn't do shit, bro. I, really, I, res, I respect that. The audacity. I really to say wish that. he would have posted his reasoning why he says right. that. Right, and it's one thing to be like, I don't think he should have done it, or like that he was set up or something. So like, maybe it's somebody who's like he was innocent. <laughs> like, I'm, well, I don't know about that. But <laughs> I think there's twelve other arguments you could have made that I maybe would have been like, sure, I'll hear you out. But just like, what do you mean he's innocent? It cuts to the cop talking to him. <laughs> Uh, Dennis uh, Sander Curley says Metal will never be back in the mainstream And it's metal's fault Anyone who enters the mainstream Gets labeled as having sold out And anyone from the mainstream Who tries to come into the metal genre Is labeled a poser 
which is not, I think, a terrible take. Yeah. Um, the first There's half, I don't necessarily that. agree with because I actually think that metal is uh, a lot of the pop artists are collabing mm-hmm. with metal artists or making yeah. metal type of songs. Like, I don't yeah. think it's uh, in, not in the mainstream, obviously. And then, like, Metallica is fucking huge. They're selling mm-hmm. out arenas still. And I think it's just but, a byproduct of metal being cool, too, because it, it's like the one genre that you could mix with any other genre and it'll make something cool and new. Right. So, like, yeah, there's a reason like a lot of pop people would like metal like metalcore and post hardcore and shit is like a perfect like oh i like pop but sometimes i'm angry yeah <laughs> like it's for like sure. a perfect makes sense as to why you would get into it i do kind of agree with him though mm-hmm. a little bit when he says that when you enter the mainstream you sold out and if you come mm-hmm. from the mainstream you're a poser i can see the more um you know cynic type you know? And being I, that, that way and that's, that stuff's annoying but i don't know if it like is weighty enough to even like affect the zeitgeist of metal you know like it's yes it's annoying when a pop artist tries to come in and they're like made fun of or and then yeah. vice, vice versa you sold out if you're big but also you're now a big artist and you're selling <laughs> tons of venues so it's like does it really matter if some right. people online are like you sold out like it, yeah sure right. <laughs> but like they're still they're doing what they want they're making the art they want to make and they're doing better than they were and then yeah vice versa even if you don't like pop or whatever them coming in and like giving that label all it is is beneficial for the genre is that there's now more eyes on it and it's less stigmatized to be like a weirdo genre you know if right. demi lovato is listening to doing pig squeals then it might make some younger right, right. people be like oh maybe metal could be fun yeah you know? i don't think yeah i think the there's always going to be negativity in comments but i don't think it truly hinders the the world of metal, you know. Or like Poppy doing the spit cover. Yeah, that was tight. You know, that's, that's really cool. I also didn't know that was a cover. Yeah. Really like, what's it? Who did it? Uh, it? Kitty. I think, oh, really? I think that's Kitty. a Kitty song? Yeah. It was a good, oh, I really like that track. Um, if I'm incorrect, please let me know in the comments. Oh, it's Spitty. I, be- I believe it's, it's Kitty. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> Scott says it's uh, metal has saved more lives than Big Pharma. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> That's a pretty good take. <laughs> no, you might be right. <laughs> you might be right. Yeah, maybe. Um, yeah. yeah, shit. Oh, yeah, I mean, if, yeah, if somebody uh, decided not, not to end their life over lyrics and then and didn't need to be medicated, like, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Right, yeah. <laughs> uh, outlet is the word. I said gateway. <laughs> yeah. I meant outlet. It's a good outlet. Um, and last Big one, <laughs> Brett Coley says, Sleep Token is only popular because people are horny. horny. That's funny. I mean, you can say that about Deftones. Yeah, I was about to say, you can say about anything. <laughs> yeah, that's just. Yeah. I mean, look at the look at the biggest selling mm-hmm. artists in the world. All they do is shake their ass and, and just perform re- half the word naked. Horny and and, and the sentence means nothing. Like they're only successful because they're talented. Like you could say that you could insert any like adjective here. Well, you said it, if people weren't horny, they wouldn't be successful. People are yeah, but the people are horny. Like, I was about to say, there's a lot of shit that's successful <laughs> yeah, because you're, you're, people are horny. You're specific. complaining about a world that will never exist. Everyone on horny. horny. Yeah, literally everyone. That's, Porn, the industry. Exactly. Be, you know what I mean? Like, there's so much. That's very funny. Uh, Deftones is a yeah. funny one for sure. I I definitely agree with that. They're like they're like sexy new metal, mm-hmm. I guess. Yeah, that's another new metal band I actually grew up really enjoying was Deftones. Yeah, Deftones yeah. had some fucking cool ass riffs. Yeah. And then yeah, and then he yeah he made moaning on tracks cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, there it is. Um, Sleep hot talking takes. is boring. <laughs> it's a metal genre. I think uh, there's a few good ones in there. Yeah, that was great. I think it was a lot of yeah. a lot of good discussions. It was funny we brought <laughs> we came up with the the spirit box conversation and then brought up the. Sleep Token was doing it too, and then they're here yeah. being complained about blowing up. And I was like, oh, look, we're right. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so if you guys want to be a part of these type of videos, go to our Facebook page, follow us there. We uh, post questions mm-hmm. and uh, and then and little funny clip clips. your replies. And uh, we'll be doing that probably on Patreon too once we get some more people in there. Bang, bang. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. Like I said before, Patreon link in the description below. It really helps us out, and you will be getting bonus content. There's you will be getting bonus. You will be. You can't. You can't. There is no escape yeah, from the no bonus. Escape. Um, there's, I think, four or five different tiers uh, of, like, perks that you get if you sign up. So I really appreciate that. And, yeah, merch coming soon. So stay tuned for that. And, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Happy 9-11. <laughs> Never forget. Why are you laughing? I don't know if that's something you say happy. Hmm? Happy 9-11. Yeah, never forget. In but lo- is it a happy... It's like you say in loving memory. It's not like, like happy birthday. Well, yeah, it's a I, good I also thing. don't love that you're dead, but you still say in loving memory.
What if, what if you do love that they're dead? Well, then you shouldn't say in loving memory. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. You should say in spiteful memory. Okay. If you want them to be, if you're happy they're dead. It, okay. Have a shitty 9-11, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>